This is a middle loop quick, quick, quick class. Hi, I'm Jerry with Middle Loop, and this is a quick class on live streaming to Facebook from a DJI drone. After producing our video on how to live stream to YouTube, we received questions asking, what about Facebook? Well, as it turns out, it's a lot more complicated than expected. The bottom line is that the method for live streaming to Facebook depends on which controller you use, and in one case, may not even be possible. Today, we'll be covering the RC Pro, the original smart controller, the RCN1 controller, and the DJI RC. You know, the one that was released with the Mini 3 Pro. We'll start out with some quick information on what makes Facebook live streaming different, and an overview of a new method we developed to accommodate those differences. Then we'll introduce Restream, which is a third-party product we'll be using, and we'll walk through setting it up. We'll then show setting up the remote controller. We'll show what going live looks like, and we'll conclude with some additional information you might find helpful, like live stream audio, copy and pasting, and more. If you're new to our channel, you might consider subscribing. We have quite a few drone-related videos like this one, two more already in the works, and plenty more planned after that. Also, if you like what you see, please go ahead and feed that YouTube algorithm. Now, let's get started. In 2019, Facebook switched the protocol that they use for live streaming from RTMP to the more secure RTMPS, which is great, unless the encoder you use doesn't support RTMPS. I'll bet you can tell where this is going. You may recall from our last video on streaming to YouTube, the drone feeds the controller. From there, we use a feature of the DJI Fly app, which turns the controller into an encoder and sends the video stream onto YouTube via RTMP. Unfortunately, as I'm sure you figured out, at this time, the Fly app used on the RC Pro and the RCN1 controllers only supports RTMP, not RTMPS. Well, that's not going to work on Facebook. So how do we get around that? The answer is by using an intermediary. Instead of sending out the feed to Facebook from the controller, we'll be sending it to a web-based service that can receive an RTMP feed, convert it to RTMPS, and then send it on to Facebook. Complicated? It's actually a lot easier than it sounds. There are a bunch of services that can do this. We looked at over a dozen, and we landed on Restream. We wanted a product that has a free option and is internet-based. Restream supports multicasting, it doesn't require a credit card, it's easy to set up and repeat with lots of other features. We'll provide some details in a second. So we mentioned the Fly app on the RC Pro and the RCM1 controller. Ironically, the older smart controller, which uses the DJI GO 4 app, does support RTMPS and therefore can send the stream directly to Facebook. We'll be producing a separate video to show that, but that smart controller can also use the method we're showing here today, which, after you see it, you might prefer. Now we also mentioned in the intro the DJI RC controller, which is an awful name, so we always find ourselves clarifying that that's the controller that came out with the Mini 3 Pro. That controller is a stripped-down version of the RC Pro, and unfortunately, at the time of this recording, does not support streaming at all. Not to Facebook, or YouTube, or any streaming service. Now we hope that changes in the future, and if it does, we'll note it in the description. So, to summarize, the original smart controller can livestream directly to Facebook, and we'll produce a separate video for that. The RC Pro, the RCN1, and the smart controller can all livestream to Facebook through an intermediary, and the DJI RC cannot livestream at all. The intermediary that we'll be using today is Restream. Restream has a number of different plans. We'll be using the free basic plan today. This product is a full-fledged streaming service with lots of features, most of which we won't be using. It has on-camera streaming with multiple guests, desktop sharing, video playback, graphics, all kinds of features. But what we are interested in is that it supports multicasting. That's where you send one stream to it, and they can send it on to multiple channels simultaneously. You could stream to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Now, we're only going to be using one today, but even with the basic free service, you can feed up to two channels simultaneously, whereas one of the paid plans supports much more. Now, you should be aware that the free plan does add a little branding of the product, whereas the paid services do not. It's pretty subtle, which we'll show when we go live later in this quick class. Now, if you Google Restream, you'll get over 300,000 results. So we've provided a link in the description to the service that we're using here. And by the way, 
Using that link will get you a discount if you ever decide to upgrade to one of the paid plans. But as I said, we'll be using the free basic plan today, which does the job nicely with no restriction on length or number of streams. So let's set it up. Using the provided link, tap the Sign Up Today button. And then, for the free plan, click Start with Basic. Now, we're not going to walk through setting up your account, that's pretty straightforward. You may need to open up an email they send you to verify it's a valid account, but it's quick and you'll be able to use it immediately. Alright, once you're signed up and logged in, you'll come to this screen. From here, click the Set Up for OBS button. The first thing you need to do is set up your destinations. We're just going to be setting up the Facebook destination today, but if you want to multicast to others at the same time, you can set up more. Click on the Add First Channel button. As you can see, Restream supports a lot of different social media services. Here's YouTube and Twitter, but we're going to select Facebook Live. Now select Profile. At this point, you've been redirected and you're logging into your Facebook account. Go ahead and log in. Essentially, you're giving Restream the rights to automatically set up and start a live stream on your Facebook account. Click Continue. By default, the live stream will be available to all your friends on Facebook. You can change it by clicking here. For our purposes today, we'll select Only Me and then click Done. I should know that it is possible to change this later, but they really don't make this very easy, so you might want to select the one that you'll be using going forward. Alright, now select Continue. Here, Facebook is telling you that Restream is requesting these permissions. You can click here to make modifications, but Restream does recommend taking the defaults. So, we're just going to leave it alone and tap Continue. And that's it! Our first destination is set up and ready to go. And if we started sending our stream right now from an encoder, we'd be live on Facebook. But before we go, this screen contains some very important information we'll need when setting up the drone's remote controller. We'll need the URL and the stream key. Now, you could just type these values into the controller by hand, but they have to be exact and getting it right can be a challenge. Instead, we recommend that you copy and paste these values into a text file and save that file to a place that you'll be able to open on the remote controller. If you need help with a copy and paste method, we walk you through it near the end of this video in the Other Information section. And that's it for Restream. In fact, we can now close the browser. It does not need to be open to send your stream and go live. We're going to be using the RC Pro in our example today. However, the RC N1 controller is almost identical. If you're using the Smart Controller and the DJI GO 4 app, it's a little different. You'll need to look under the General Settings tab. If you're having any trouble at all, check out our live stream video for YouTube. It walks through the Smart Controller setup. Somewhere between that video and this video, most of your questions should be answered. We've provided a link to that video in the description, which will get you to the right spot. Alright, with the RC Pro on and connected to the drone, select the three dots in the upper right. Under the Transmission tab, you'll find Live Streaming Platforms near the top. Tap on the right arrow. And then tap on RTMP. In the address field goes a combination of the stream URL and the stream key. We showed you where to get this information earlier during the Restream setup. We're just going to paste it from the text file we created earlier, but if you're typing by hand, you'll first need to type the URL, then add a forward slash, and then the stream key. For details on the method we use to copy and paste from a text file, we cover that near the end of this video in the More Information section. As for resolution and bitrate, here you might want to experiment depending on how good your internet connection is. We're going to leave this at 1080p and 5 megabits per second. Most phone data plans can handle that just fine. But if you're concerned about data plan usage, you might consider lowering these. And that's it! The RC Pro is now set up. I'm sure it goes without saying the remote controller needs to be connected to the internet. If you're on the RC Pro or Smart Controller, you're probably using a hotspot. And if you're on the RCN1 controller using a cell phone as a display, it's even easier. Just be aware that streaming video is pretty data intensive and it can eat up your data plan pretty quickly. Now before we start streaming, make sure your video settings are correct. The resolution doesn't matter much, even if your video is set to 4K, your live stream will be limited to 720 or 1080p, whatever you pick when you are setting up your stream. Now you might want 4K or higher if you're recording on your drone at the same time, which you can do. We do recommend that you pick a 16 by 9 aspect ratio for widescreen. Also, your exposure settings will affect how your live stream looks. So, aperture, weight balance, ISO all have an effect. 
you should treat your live stream no different than any other video you shoot, although you won't have the benefit of fixing things in post-production, which includes color correction. So if you have D-Log available to you, you might want to stay away from it. All right, let's go live. As I said earlier, since we've already set up Restream, it's just sitting there waiting for your stream to be sent. So there's nothing more to do on that side. To go live, on the controller, let's get back to the setup page. Are you ready? Tap the start button. After the countdown, that's it. You're live on Facebook. And you'll see this icon at the top. Now let's jump over to Facebook and see what that looks like. And there it is, your live stream. Now once you stop your stream, Facebook will automatically convert it to a recording, which your visitors can play back. And if you remember earlier when I said Restream adds some branding of their product, this is what I was talking about. Now let's check out what you see on the Restream interface. Log back in. And here's the video. Plus, you get some information about the stream it's receiving. This is always good to see. Now you'll notice we're getting a warning and recommendation regarding the key stream interval. This is not something we can set on the controller at this time. It's twice what Restream would prefer, but it doesn't seem to have any ill effect. Now we're not going to get into the analytics at all here, but if you're curious about what's going on with your social media channels, you can check that out here. All right, back on the RC Pro. Let's shut it down. Go ahead and tap that icon at the top of the screen. Select Exit, and when prompted, tap End. On Facebook, your viewers will first get a little spinner, and then a video has ended screen. And as I said, once Facebook has rendered your video, this will become a playback screen. We wanted to provide a little more information you might find helpful. We'll first get into details on how to copy and paste the stream URL and key from Restream to your computer. Then we'll touch on stream audio, which your viewers will hear during your live stream. And finally, we'll talk about scheduling your live stream versus just going live ad hoc. During the setup, we showed you there are two key pieces of information that are generated by Restream and need to be entered into the remote controller. They are the stream URL and stream key. This data is fairly cryptic and it needs to be entered exactly, which is why we recommend that you copy and paste them. Also, you may remember that they go into the same field on the controller separated by a forward slash. So we'll be taking care of that too. The tricky part is you'll be copying the data from Restream on your computer and pasting it to a field on the remote controller. Two different devices, so you just can't simply copy and paste using the clipboard. Instead, you'll be using a text file to carry the data from one device to the other. First, we're going to create the text file using a text editor. On a PC, we suggest using Notepad. In our example, we're on a Mac, so we'll be using the text edit application. OK, new document. This text editor defaults to rich text, but we prefer plain text. So we're going to switch it by clicking Format and selecting Make Plain Text. If you're using Notepad on a PC, it's already in plain text, so you don't need to do anything. Now in Restream, first click the Copy button on the RTMP URL. Then paste it to the text file using the Command V keys on the Mac or Control V on the PC. Now we need to add a forward slash. Type it on the keyboard and then copy the stream key and paste it right after the slash we just added. All right, that's the string of characters we need for the controller. Just make sure there aren't any spaces. Next, we need to save the text file to a place we can access on the remote controller. That'll vary depending on which controller you use. This chart might help. You may be able to use an internet-based file depository or external drive. Notice we included the remote controller itself as an external drive. That's because you can just plug the controller into a PC and it will show up as a drive. If you're using a Mac, it's a little tricky. Mac and Android devices don't play well together natively, but it can be done. It just requires a third-party app. We have a video that uses the app in the opposite direction, but you might find it useful. And then, of course, you could just email the file to yourself. But in our example today, we'll be using a USB flash drive on the RC Pro. Now we'll paste it into the address field on the remote controller. First, we need to open our text file. If you're using an internet-based depository or email, I would imagine you'd get to it with a browser. But for these three, you'll find your file using the Files app, which is what we're using today. We've already inserted our flash drive into the RC Pro. The first thing we need to do is tap the three bars in the upper left to change it from internal storage to the external USB drive. You'll notice we also have a micro SD card inserted, which shows here. 
but we're using the USB drive, which is this one. Yours will be named something different. Now you need to navigate to where you saved the file. We put ours on the root directory, so all we need to do is scroll down a bit. And there it is. We called ours Stream Info 4. By tapping on it, we're prompted to open it. Since the RC Pro doesn't have a text editor, it's defaulting to this HTML viewer, which will work just fine. Tap just once. And there's the string we need. Just tap and hold your finger on it, and it will be selected. Tap Copy. And now you can close the Files app. The string we needed is now on the clipboard. Next, with the RC Pro connected to the drone, open the Fly app and let's get back to the RTMP setup screen. From here, we'll be pasting from the clipboard to the RTMP address field. Now, if there's already a value in there, you'll need to be sure to get rid of all of it. Tap and hold a second and then release. The virtual keyboard will open and a portion, if not all of the text, will be highlighted. You may wish to tap Select All just for good measure and then tap Paste as plain text. To close the virtual keyboard, push the back button on the remote controller. And that's it. I'm sure you want to test it before heading into the field. If you get a message like this, try clearing and pasting the value again. When live streaming your drone mission, we would imagine you probably would like to be on microphone doing the play-by-play. -play. So we tested all three of the controllers covered in this video live streaming to Facebook using Restream as an intermediary. And I have to tell you, the results were somewhat surprising and very different from what we reported in our live streaming to YouTube video. We first tested the RC Pro. Now the RC Pro does not have an internal microphone, so we tested using the DJI mic system. At first, it was pretty distorted. I'd say unacceptable. So we tried turning down the output, first by 3 decibels and then by 6. It still was a little distorted, but I would now say it's usable. By the way, for fun, I hooked up a Yeti Blue USB mic to the RC Pro. Now that mic is way too big for the field, but it sounded good. I think the key is that mic also has a gain control, which we had set to about 15 or 20%. We next tested the smart controller on Facebook. This controller has a built-in microphone, which, when held at normal flying position, has a very off-mic or distant sound to it. When we held it closer to our mouth, the sound improved, but now we couldn't see the screen. We also tested the smart controller with the DJI mic. It sounded great, none of that distortion we heard with it on the RC Pro. Plus, we like that it's wireless. It has two mics, one for you and one for a guest, and it comes with windscreens. We really like this mic system. Finally, we tested the RCN1 controller using an iPhone as the monitor. For audio, it also uses the iPhone's microphone. And on Facebook, it sounded good. Now if you saw our video on YouTube live streaming, we couldn't get this controller to work without the microphone being overly distorted. And thinking Restream had something to do with it working, we tested sending the Restream output to both Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. Facebook still sounded great, but YouTube was distorted. Anyway, this video is on Facebook, and the RCN1 controller worked just fine. So in this quick class, we've only showed going live ad hoc, but you might want to consider the feature in Restream where you can schedule an event. The key advantage is that you can promote it ahead of time, and Restream makes it pretty easy. Now they have an integration with Facebook online events, which automatically creates the Facebook event for you. You create a title and a description. You can even upload a thumbnail. If you're interested, Restream has some pretty good documentation. So that's it for this quick class. If you found this video useful, please take a moment and hit that like button. Also, don't forget to check out the description where we included several links referenced in this video. Speaking of links, here are some videos you might find relevant. Thank you, have a great day, and happy flying!